in Canada. Right. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think I... Oh, look, like another, another reason I'm saying in the swamp, you guys, a swamp. All right, so you heard that, and everyone's been talking about this, man, this interaction between Sean Strickland, Stan Strickland and the reporter that kind of tried to bait him with some questions. So we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about everything as a whole. You know, there's been a lot of things going on with the UFC recently where Colby Covington got into it with Leon, and people thought he crossed the line, then Jerikas and Sean, the stabbing, now this, so... I'm going to show a couple clips. I'm going to, you know, give you guys a little bit of a build up in terms of what this video is going to be about. You know, does the UFC have a PR problem? Do they need to start fining people for speech or is that going way too over the line? So we got MVP who just joined the UFC and he's going to talk about what Colby said. So let's hear what his opinion is here. You're a fucking idiot. Then get you might the be the after, stupidest right? guy on the UFC roster. Literally, you're so fucking stupid. On Saturday night, I'm gonna bring you to a place you never wanna be. I'm gonna bring you to the seventh layer of hair, hell. Okay. No, I'm bringing you to seventh layer of hell. You, we'll, we'll, we'll say what's up to your dad while we're there. So far in combat sports, I hate, I don't like it. I don't like people talking about people's fathers, people's wives, people's girlfriends, people's kids, all of that kind of stuff. We need to go back to martial arts. It's mixed martial arts and everyone seems to have lost themselves a little bit. I have zero respect for, for people that feel the need to go there. We're skillful athletes and that should be enough. Um, I'm, I'm all for the banter. And more for the jokes and keeping it kind of friendly and, and, and that should be enough to build a fight and again we can keep the intensity but it should stay between me and the person that's fighting and, and that's it i couldn't agree more ah uh, there's a little snake in the grass right there uh, I, did, I just spoke an hour about all this how it feels like last week was a very dark time for the sport and it's been building yeah. but it felt like we were we were we were rolling in the gutter with some of this trash talk but for me uh, for me uh, i feel like uh, ufc could hand out fines just do something just to just to yes. kind of alleviate so people don't if you're going to step over the you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna punish you uh, open to the public because i guess it helps it with sales i guess but there you go here i have that fine Let, let's see how, how often you're gonna want to just do right before that. i give my opinion my thoughts on what I think the UFC should do. Let's just listen to the full clip, what Sean Strickland said to this reporter, just so you guys can have full context. And tell me what you think. Who do you agree with down below in the comments? Do you think the reporter was out of line asking these questions in this type of situation? Or do you think this was the right place, right time to do it? I'm glad to hear it. it's been great. Are you a Canadian? Uh, of course I am. Are you part of the fucking opposition? Are you? Uh, I don't know how to phrase that. You, I mean, you got like fucking. Uh, yeah. Well, I did want to ask. Did you, you vote for Trudeau? Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say. And, and let me tell you something right now. But man says he's not gonna say. Like if you ask a motherfucker, did you vote for Biden? He's like, well, I'm not gonna say. That's none of your business. He voted for fucking Biden. Sean, but, I, hey, Sean, I'm glad you had great experiences. So this is Our, this is what I'm talking about, you guys. The enemy, the enemy of Canada. Sure. Right. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think I'd... Oh, look, another, another reason I'm yeah. saying in the swamp, you guys, the swamp. You become a champion, you become a star, and, and someone says... Let me ask model. you something. Are you, are you, are you gay? I had the chance no, to are, back with are, a more diverse... Are you... Let me ask you, are you gay? Can I, hear, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking. I'm, this is a part of... Are you, are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. If you had a son and he was like, you know, yeah, son, he was gay, you'd be like, oh, man, you don't... You don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, dude, you're a weak fucking man, dude. You're like, you're part of the fucking problem. You elected Justin Trudeau. Like, when you fucking, when he sees the bank accounts, like, you're just fucking pathetic. And, and the fact that, the fact that you have no fucking backbone and, and has he shut down your fucking country and seized bank accounts, you ask me some stupid shit like that, go fuck yourself. Move the fuck on, man. Uh, that doesn't really coward. answer the question, but I did want to ask also things you said about the trans community. You said, uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that, You'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when uh, when they know what it, and we'll know what they stand for. Are you this guy's like that. Hey, this Canadian's not that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans was a what a mental fucking illness, and now all of a sudden, people like you have fucking weaselled your way in the world. You are you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of fucking you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your fucking bullshit you're fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? 
You're right. Fucking chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could fuck in school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is the fucking enemy. Uh, you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker right there asking these stupid fucking questions. Sorry, I'm, I, I told you she has been nicer. Lance, Lance am, I, am I still doing this? Am I, did I cross any lines? And finally, now I'm going to give my thoughts on it. And right here we got Alexander K. Lee. This is the person who asked the question here. And for me right away, you know, this tweet right here kind of gives me pause to cause because you see tweeted trans women are women, right? Then he tweeted with the UFC 2 main, 297 main event in Toronto announced, here's a reminder. And I'm not even going to go into, you know, my opinion or all that, all their argument because it's not really the point of this video. But that tweet right there, to me, that shows me. I mean, 297 main event, Sean Strickland versus Drikas Duplessis, right? He's from Canada. Obviously, maybe he felt some type of way that they wanted that guy as the main event because he obviously doesn't like his politics and everything like that and his opinion on that matter, right? So he was planning this for, for months. I mean, this is November 6, 2023. So he knew by the day that they announced the fight that he was going to go in there and bait him and ask these type of questions and try to get a reaction. And to me, that's not your job, man. You're there to cover the fights, all the fights. And when you're asking Sean Strickland questions, you don't got to inject your opinions on trans and gays. And I know he does it himself, but you're not the story, man. He's the story. Ask him about fighting. I mean, that's your job. You're not there to report on gay and transgender rights. You're there to report on the fight. You are you work for MMA fighting. You don't work for, you know, a, a gay rights organization. And then he had this tweet as well, or he retweeted this tweet where they're calling to suspend him and take him off UFC 297. So he baited him into the question, I mean, in my opinion, and then he's going to try to get him kip, kicked off the show. So to me, all, all this was an agenda from the beginning. It seems very disingenuous and slimy in my opinion. So that's just what I feel regardless of, um, you know, whether I agree or disagree with Sean or Alexander K. Lee, it doesn't really matter to me. I just think that, you know, coming into an event as a journalist to ask a question to somebody that you want to get a visceral reaction and then call to kick them off the show. To me, that's ridiculous. I mean, and um, as far as finding guys for speech and all that, I mean, I find it ironic. It's two uh, non-Americans talking about finding people for speech in a, you know, an American company. But man, we got the freedom of speech here. And I just don't see how you could find someone for speech. It's so ridiculous. It's like, man, you could say whatever you want. There's going to be repercussions. You're going to get in a fight. The guy could beat the shit out of you right there. Like, it is what it is. I mean, but I just think it's so dumb to be trying to restrain people from saying certain things. I mean, that's part of why I like the UFC. Part of why they can become stars and make money is because they're not cookie cutter like these other sports like NBA, NFL, NHL, all that, where they have to toe the line. They have to kind of say the corporate message. They can't have their own opinion and the people that do get excoriated. I like the UFC where you could have different personalities and if you don't agree with it, you don't agree with it. You don't got to listen to him. You don't got to follow him. You don't got to watch his fights, but don't muzzle him and not let him speak. So that's just kind of what I think. I think all this stuff is ridiculous. I think that um, Alexander K. Lee, you know, I don't know him. I uh, Probably a pretty good journalist, but just think that was a huge gaffe there and kind of emotional decision. So that's my opinion on it. What do you guys think? And uh, thanks for watching this video, guys.